First of all, please consider that there is, um, I mean, there is a problem in the treatment of RLS. Uh, so far, the treatment of choice has been based on uh, dopamine agonists. Uh, these drugs are very effective over the short term, but are very ineffective over the mid and particularly over the long term. So most of the patients under the current existing treatments, uh, which are basically dopaminergics, uh, over the long term develop a clinical condition called dopaminergic augmentation, which means basically a jatrogenic increase in RLS symptoms as a result of that, not despite of the treatment, but as a result of the treatment. So it's really a jatrogenic worsening. Um, so we're making by the use of these drugs patients worse than they were initially. Uh, so there is a need for additional treatments. Um, additional treatments have been based mainly on glutamatergic mechanisms. Uh, recent findings have shown that adenosine is involved in the pathophysiology of RLS. The main problem in RLS are a corticostriatal pathways that are hyperactive. And uh, one of the main inhibitors of these hyperactive corticostriatal pathways is adenosine. Uh, but ad adenosinergic mechanisms are reduced in RLS. So there is a rationale to develop drugs that increase adenosinergic inhibition of these pathways. This is the starting point for why we're using dipridamol. Dipridamol is a drug, it's an old anti-aggregant that besides its effect on clothing, has effects also on the adenosinergic mechanism. Uh, it blocks the reuptake of adenosine into the, into the neurons, and by blocking it, it increases ad extracellular adenosine. By doing that, it will inhibit uh, the hyperactive uh, corticostriatal pathways. And what we want to know is also, does, it, does this result in an improvement of RLS symptoms? Yes, and we have some data here for the first time. I mean, uh, dipyridamol improves RLS, sever uh, sorry, improves RLS severity, it decreases it, it improves their nighttime sleep, and it also improves uh, their motor dysfunction while these patients are sleeping. We have done our trial in patients that were not previously treated with uh, other medications. And this, this is a very important thing because many uh, viewers of this, uh, of this video will, will tend to think, well, maybe I can switch my patient that is not, a given patient that is not responding to, uh, to dopaminergics, maybe I can switch them to, uh, to dipyridamol. Well, we don't know that because uh, a patients that have been pre-treated with dopaminergics tend to be very unresponsive to anything else after that. So uh, the treatment is mainly thought for patients that are initiating their first treatment for the disorder, not for those that are already treatment resistant for dopaminergics. It's very likely that these patients that have been going on, on a treatment uh, for, with dopaminergics for long, that their response rate to the peridamol might be lower. There's, it's very likely. We have seen this also with drugs like pregabalin, or we have seen that in drugs like um, a gabapentin. Drugs that are on different, upon different mechanisms, tend to respond less to uh, patients that have been pretreated with dopaminergics. So there's a tendency to that. Yeah.